Hey, hey, and welcome to this, another episode of Work Smarter, Not Harder, with me, Tony Harmer. And in this episode, which is another Illustrator episode, we're going to take a look at dynamic symbols, which were introduced in Illustrator CC 2015. So let me just turn off the backgrounds that I've got here for this and just get to this camper van artwork that I've got here. Okay, I'll zoom in on that a little bit so you can see it. Okay, and I'll just go into outline mode so you can see it's a very, very simple shape. Uh, it's got a little appearance attribute here, so it's a group there with uh, a black stroke that's drawn around it or very dark grey stroke that's drawn around it like so. I'm going to turn this into a dynamic symbol. So to do that, I simply select it, okay, and come across to my symbols panel and I drag that in like so. I can then give it a name. So if I just call this camper van, just here, you don't need to worry about the export type there unless you're exporting for Animate CC or Flash, but you will want to concern yourself with the radio buttons beneath. Dynamic symbol is what we're after here and that gives it certain special properties. So I'm going to hit OK like so and the dynamic symbol is created. If you look at the symbol in the symbol panel, you'll notice it's got a small plus down to the bottom right corner. And that's a giveaway that it's a dynamic symbol. So what can dynamic symbols do for us? Well, I'm going to zoom back out to the whole document because you'll see that the original artwork has been replaced with an instance of our new symbol. So I'm just going to get the Alt key here and the selection tool and just drag a couple of additional uh, camper vans away from that, so a couple of copies just there. And I'm going to tap A to switch to the direct selection tool, okay, and then I'm going to click on this red area here. I'm going to go to my swatches and I'm going to change that out for a green maybe, and I'll do the same at the top of the surfboard there. We'll make them match the whole way along. In fact, on this one, I think I'll even change the wheels there like so. So there you are, I've got that nice color scheme going on just there. And I'll select this one now and I'll make this one blue. And again, same with the surfboard. I'm just going to make that blue too. And there you go. So now I've got those three different instances and they're all very, very different. Let's make one of those go the other way. So if I select this one, tap O for the reflect tool, hit return. Vertical is perfect. Let's just do that and have that. So that's going the other way. Let's make it so the green one here is going quite fast. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to get the shear tool from the toolbox and I'm actually going to shear this. I'm holding down shift there to keep that. So that one's going quite fast just there like so. And I'll do the same over with this one over here just to a lesser extent. So let's make that go just a little way. And these are still symbol instances. And what will happen here is as this changes, the symbol that is, or the master definition of it, then these will just automatically update. There are a couple of different ways I could do this. I could double click it on the artboard. It would tell me I'm going to edit the definition and I could kind of work on that in place. Or equally, I could come up with any instance selected and choose edit symbol, get the same thing just there, or double clicking away from that to go back going to the symbol panel, double clicking that, then I get this isolation view mode. So let's zoom in on that just there. And what I'm going to do here is just add something to suggest a badge at the front here. So I'm going to get the pen tool and I'm just going to make kind of a curvy shape to sort of mimic the front of the van there, like so. I'm just gonna tap D to give that the default. And then I'm going to hit the slash key to remove the fill because the fill is in front there and hit the escape key to exit the pen tool. Then I'm going to use some stroke attributes here. So I'm going to increase the weight. Just dial that up a little bit there. I'm going to add some end caps like so. In fact, I think I'll go for three points. And then I'm going to outline that stroke. So I'm just going to go path, outline stroke just here. Makes that a shape. I'll just tap D to give that the default for the stroke and just dial down that stroke there like so. I just need to cut that to the clipboard because while I'm inside the symbol, 
this is actually a group inside the symbol. So I need to double click in there to get into the group. You can see that in the isolation mode bar at the top. I can then paste that in place and you'll see that the appearance attribute I've got that kind of draws the black stroke around it, they're working perfectly. Do you know what? I'm going to narrow that up just a little bit. It's a bit too chunky for that. So if I just go back, so you can see I've done that, I've double clicked outside and now all of those instances has updated. So I can very quickly build out my little scene like so. Let's try and put that in another context, that of doing some UX work. So I'm just going to lock this layer and I'm going to make the layer above active, which has this button graphic inside of it. So I'll just bring that up like so. And I'm going to turn that into a symbol. So I'll drag it into the panel. I'll call it button. It's going to be dynamic and I'll hit OK. And then I'm going to drag a couple of instances of that out just over there. So I might have done that and I might have changed the way these things look. So I might have, for example, gone in and changed the color of this button down like so. So I'll make that a completely different color. And I might have also changed the stroke. So I'll just tap X there to bring the stroke to the foreground and I'll change the color of that. And I'll do this one over here too. So I'll come along and we'll make this one green just there. I tap X and now I'll give that a sort of a green fill. Like so maybe something a little bit darker. Here we go. And I'll even change this instance just here. So we'll make this sort of a darker red and then give it a sort of a light stroke around the outside. So, of course, I might have done this in several different places throughout a project. Of course, just as I did a moment ago, editing the symbols. If I dive in here and edit the symbol, so this has some dynamic corners. So if I decided to change the corner radius or even the corner type from here. So let's just uh, give these a completely different look. We'll go for an inverse rounded. And the other thing I'll do is I'll change the typeface that's in use. So let's just go for something sans serif, which is Arial just there, like so. Double click outside, fit the document, and you can see all of those things have updated. So there you are. That's the power of dynamic symbols. I hope you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Reach out to me via Twitter and follow my Facebook page. If you pause the movie in a second, you'll get all of those details and do keep on watching. So that's it for this one. And until next time, see ya.